Welcome to the Access SQL Seminar Part 2, brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. This seminar picks up where the SQL Part 1 seminar left off. You'll learn more about action queries in SQL, which is using SQL to update and change your data. You'll learn how to edit records, add records, create a new table, add records onto an existing table, and delete records. You'll learn about aliasing, which is creating a shorthand for your field and table names. You'll learn how to work with the different types of joins to bring multiple tables together. We'll build a cross-tab query so you can see your data across multiple axes. You'll learn about aggregate queries, using sums and averages and counts to get more information out of your data. And you'll learn how to work with different functions inside of your SQL queries, such as string manipulation functions, date time functions, and lots more. Now, as I mentioned a minute ago, this is part two of a three-part series on SQL. It is strongly recommended that you take part one of my seminar before taking this part. There is a lot of good fundamental information about SQL and exactly what this seminar series covers in part one, so don't miss that. For more information on this seminar, go to accesslearningzone.com and look for my Access Seminars list. Part one of the series covered the SQL basics, mostly select queries. This part, part two, will cover action queries, joins, functions, and a lot of the techniques that I mentioned earlier. Part three, the next part in the series, will cover mostly table and query design, actually building tables and queries from inside your SQL code. I will be using Access 2010 for this seminar. If you're using 2007, you shouldn't have any problems following along. The material is also valid for previous versions of Access. The screens are a little different, but all the material is the same. And I'll point out any major differences where applicable. Now let's take a minute to go over exactly what's covered in each lesson of this seminar. In lesson one, we'll learn about update queries. We'll build an update query using the classic Access Query Designer, and then we'll see how the SQL for an update query works. In lesson two, we're continuing on with update queries. We'll see how to run an update query that joins data from multiple tables. In lesson three, we'll begin building a form to allow us to automate the updating of our product pricing based on the pricing that our vendor sends us. In lesson four, we'll build an update pricing button where we can launch our custom SQL statement to run the update query. In lesson five, we'll talk about append queries or an insert into query in SQL. And I'll show you how to use the append query to create a log function so we can track different user activities in our database, such as when they logged on or opened a form. We'll track that by adding single records with values using an append query. In lesson six, we'll continue working with append queries. Instead of just copying them one record at a time, however, I'll show you how to copy a bunch of records from a table into another table. In lesson seven, we'll learn how to use a make table query to create time-based backups of our tables. Since we know how to manipulate SQL statements directly, we can make the table name that is created have a time and date stamp. In lesson eight, we'll create a delete query to delete inactive products from our product table. In lesson nine, we're going to learn about the top keyword in SQL, where I can say, show me the top five records, the top 10 records, the top 50% of records. We'll learn the SQL for it, and we'll start to build a form where the user can pick what they want to see. Show me the top three, what field do you want to sort it by, and so on. In lesson 10, we're going to continue building the top X items form that we started in the last lesson. We'll add some more parameters to it. We'll learn some text functions to work with our SQL. And we'll build a report that I'll show you how to synchronize with the form to show the same records. 
In lesson 11, we'll learn about aliases, where you can change the field names and the table names in your query on the fly. In lesson 12, we'll begin learning about joins. We'll learn about the different types of joins, and we'll see how inner joins work in detail. In lesson 13, we'll do more with joins. We'll learn about the left and right outer joins. We'll talk about full joins. We'll see an example of a self-join, where we'll join employees to itself, where we can have employees and supervisors. We'll learn more about Cartesian products, and I'll show you an example where we'll make a softball schedule where every team won't play itself. In lesson 14, we'll learn more about the in clause that we began learning about in part one of the series. In this lesson, we'll learn how to use a select statement inside of an in clause. In lesson 15, we're going to cover the union query, which allows us to union together the results from multiple tables into one query. In lesson 17, we're going to talk a little bit about calculations in SQL, including the basics like addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division, but we'll also talk about integer division and modulus. In lesson 18, we're going to learn about string concatenation, which is adding strings together, and I'm going to show you a neat SQL trick. In lesson 19, we'll take a look at aggregate queries, where we can group and total based on various criteria. Continuing on with aggregate queries, in lesson 20, we'll learn about the where and expression options in SQL, and we'll learn how to use an SQL statement as a where condition. In lesson 21, we're going to start looking at functions that you can use in queries. We'll start off with string functions. Lesson 22 will cover most of the popular time and date functions that you use in access queries. Lesson 23 is going to cover all the rest of the functions that I use on a regular basis, including some math functions and some conversion functions. In lesson 24, we're going to learn how to build a form with cascading combo boxes. We'll use SQL statements in our combo boxes. So when the user picks a country, it will filter the state box to only show states or provinces from that country. Then when a state is picked, it will only show cities, in this case offices, from that state. That's cascading combo boxes. Now in the last lesson, we started top down. We picked a country and went down to state and then city. Well, what happens if you have to go the other way around? What happens if you know the city and you need to show a list of valid states and then the country for that city? Well, in this lesson, we'll cascade our combo boxes the other way and we'll learn a new function called DLOOKUP. If you have any questions while you're taking this seminar, please feel free to post them in the Access Forum on my website. You'll find we have a very active community of users, and either myself or one of them will be happy to answer your questions. If you have any other questions, feel free to contact us at accesslearningzone.com slash contact. Now sit back and relax and get ready to continue learning SQL.